Hi, I'm Judith Cassell Mamet. I'm really happy to be with you today to share some art journaling techniques and some things that I've been doing with some materials that are just in my studio to, uh, to pass the time and to record this crazy moment. I do a lot of art journaling because I like the freedom of just filling a page and turning it rather than feeling the pressure of um, creating something perfect every time I, I take out my art materials. And I particularly love to work on journals that are recording my experiences while traveling. And when I do a travel journal, I typically work with both text and uh, imagery that I both sketch from uh, real life, so drawing from observation, and I'll sketch from memory, and I'll sketch from my imagination, and I add collage, and um, just like to do things in the journal to capture a moment. So as this whole pandemic started, I was so unbelieving. But I thought to myself, I bet really want to capture this moment of what is going on. So I started a uh, COVID journal or pandemic journal. I don't know what the title is going to be yet. It might be something cute or just something disbelieving. Um, so I thought I'd share the process with you today and pay particular attention to just two or three techniques that you would likely be able to do in your journal with just simple materials you have on hand. So to start, I'm going to work from a journal uh, that looks like this to start. This is an Aqua B journal. It's six inches by six inches. And these are my favorite journals if I'm going to work with a uh, spiral uh, spine like this, a wire, uh, wire spine, uh, because I really like the paper. It's a high quality paper and it'll hold up to water or spraying different things on it and uh, working with collage and it rarely bleeds through. Um, I'm going to switch over to a different camera to show you uh, the pages of the journal that I've done and to show you some techniques. But before I do that, I wanted to say that um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to email me at jcmamet at gmail.com. And you can find more information about my art journaling and get all kinds of free tips and tricks in my monthly newsletters, which you can sign up for on jcmammoth.net. And I have videos on YouTube. There's a bunch, uh, certainly a lot of different hair colors showing up on those YouTube videos. And I'm also a teacher on Blueprint. And I have two classes that are up uh, that show different journaling techniques. So I'm going to switch cameras now and do a flip through of my journal that I'm keeping specifically for these weeks as things change. Um, I'll, I'll flip over to that and um, show you some of these techniques. So here is my, uh, my journal that I've been working on. And as you can see, I've altered the cover already. I just painted it black and then attached some collage elements on here. This one is a collage piece that I did using actual hand sanitizer and some spray inks, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. I never do the first page. I always leave that first page blank because I feel like it's too much pressure to do something perfect. So I'll come back and do that first page down the road. Here's where I started. And you'll notice there's a lot of text in this journal, possibly more text than I've used, but I'm finding that as I write things out, like keeping track of the days of the week and what happened as this whole thing started to come unfold. Um, the text seems to be helping me process a little more. And again, I'm using this journal both as a way to record a moment and to process what, what I'm feeling and going through. So I'm using all kinds of mixed media. Um, here's another example of the hand sanitizer technique that I'm going to show you. And one of the things that I think is, is fun is, is working with found poetry. So this is a technique that I invite you to try. I have this paper with all these different juicy phrases. My whole is a bird ideas. Look at this one, getting sick and other calamities. How did I know to put that on a, on a sheet? And some various words. If you would like a copy of this, Again, send me an email, jcmamet at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to send this as a, uh, an attachment in an email back to you. And then you just simply cut up 
the phrases that you want to use, figure out how to lay them out, and attach them to a page with whatever you have. Uh, glue stick or double stick tape will work just fine. I have you know, a page like this where I spend a little bit more time cutting out my letters. And then a page, a simple page like this, keeping the door closed and keeping a list just for myself of some of the things I miss. Then this is a crazy technique I'm gonna show you again um, using hand sanitizer. And this is where I have cut a page. Can you see how it's still attached to the edge? So this is the first technique we're gonna work on together. You can just watch and do this at some point. This is a super easy way to shape the page. And I did the hand over this photograph uh, that my friend Julie sent me showing how our favorite place in Colorado, Cresty Butte, is completely closed. I'm using the journal to sketch. This was from my imagination. I had given some flowers to our next door neighbor. I'm keeping the notes our neighbor is giving us. And then I just filled the page with the decorative element. element. So you can get sketches in your journal from your imagination, from uh, observation, and from memory. So I would say this is actually more from memory of, of what was there. I'm keeping track of, of some of the things that came up that we didn't know about, like when they told us not to wear masks, and then when they said, yes, in fact, it's a good idea to make masks. So here's another shaped page. Can you see how that's against the spiral binding here? So I just cut the shape out, leaving that section. And you might notice that I have some of these, um, these are, are stamps that I made on the pages. That just helps remind me to keep track of the date. Now here's a page I think you'd have a really good time with, creating a map of your environment. So I started out with just taking a pencil and drawing in just some rough shapes. And then I went over that pencil with my pen. I like these Micron pens, they're waterproof. And then I erased my pencil mark. Then I just was feeling silly or, or uh, like I needed a good laugh. So I started to create my legend. My favorite are the wine tour stops. So there's a little red wine glass and I stopped there and I had a glass of wine there and then I had a glass of wine on our balcony and then I had a glass of wine on the couch. And so these little glasses of wine are indicating where I, I've taken my, my afternoon uh, cocktail. And I've included things like my um, immune boost center. That's where we're keeping our vitamin C. And our Stairmaster is over here. We live in an apartment, so when you exit our apartment, we're trying to go up and down the 13 flights of stairs, sometimes successfully. And um, so doing this map was super fun. After I erased the pencil, then I got in with just watercolors or a colored marker, something that's just super easy that you might have sitting around in the house. I always like to include a compass rose. So here's the north, south, east, west, just to orient. And I just cut that out of an old map just to add it. So I fill my pages with collage and, and some fun stuff just to, again, record this crazy time. This is a photograph of my two sons. I just printed that out and used that. And then I just had a couple of days where I was overwhelmed by all the stories I've been hearing of everything people have gone through and what they're continuing to go through. So I just made a, a real jumbled uh, set of pages here to kind of reflect that. Again, it's a, a lot of this is just giving yourself permission to do what you're feeling at that moment. And even though I would, this is far from pretty, um, it does reflect the, the days that I did this. And I'm trying to capture that swirl, that total confusion. I'm trying to write down the highs and the lows and do little illustrations as I see fit. And I wanted to capture, uh, and this was just drawn from memory. Um, you could say imagination. There, it's not an exact replica of my friends, but the four of us got uh, seats in a, a backyard and put out our chairs in a backyard and tried to have a, a nice happy hour together a few weeks ago. Here's another set of pages where I cut down the middle. And these are just contour drawings of the things that I have to have and work with, you know, the hand sanitizer, the wipes and the scissors. And I've got this section for the things that are 
bringing me some pleasure, some more red wine, it's sounding like I drink a lot, I don't, but uh, maybe by the end of this I will be. And this was a chocolate cake and some candy and some flowers. So I'm really just trying to mix it up and do different things on, on my pages. This came from um, a little trip I took. This is from memory. And then I sat in front of this beautiful tree um, on a trailhead just outside of Denver and, and took a half hour to draw this tree. And oh, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, and then you can see more text. And like I said, with this journal, I seem to be wanting to put in as much text as, as everything else. My sewing machine, a view from the window, and I have the materials to hand carve a rubber stamp. So I carved a stamp of a uh, sewing needle and thread just to indicate the never ending uh, challenge of, of making our own masks. And then I flip back and draw from observation. And then I put in some memes that, I, that friends had sent that I thought were funny. And again, just some more personal writing. And then here are some more hands. And this is the, um, the demonstration I wanna show you in a second. This was inspired by one of my students, uh, Stephanie, who showed me how she had painted bubbles on her hands to show all the washing. So I was inspired by her. And you can see I've got different size bubbles and different colors. And then this hand was painted with blue uh, watercolor just to show those disposable gloves that we seem to be wearing. And then again, I didn't feel like drawing this. And so I just photocopied that out on my home printer. I'm gonna put an entry in there. And I've created some areas to write in and I'll be doing some journal entries in here. And I used a photo there. And another way of doing the hand um, is instead of it having oriented horizontally, I oriented this hand vertically. And I'll show you that technique as well. So if you want to work along with me, uh, now's a good time to grab a pencil and a scissor or an X-Acto knife. And um, I'll show you how I, how I go about the cutting and uh, how to create this. So this is my um, Aqua Bee journal. Again, it's six by six, so I have just barely enough room to set my hand on the page full on. Um, I can push my hand back just so that I ca capture the fingers. I don't care really where this ends up over here on the spine. And you just take a pencil and draw around your fingers. And it's perfectly okay if your fingers come out all wiggy because you can cut them smooth or you can just cut them lumpy and bumpy and however they are, it doesn't matter. We don't ever aim for perfection in this business. We just wanna do something that's satisfying and that's gonna capture the moment. So I have a very thin cutting board. Can you see the edge of that? And so I stick the cutting board under the paper I'm gonna cut if I only want one hand. If I want two hands, I can probably put two pieces of paper here and cut through two. And I, for this demo, I'm just gonna do the one. And I have an X-Acto knife, which makes it really easy. So I can just cut along the lines that I've got. And I'm gonna take that end off. And I can keep cutting with my X-Acto knife very carefully. Now, what if you don't have an X-Acto knife? Well, for that, you can easily use a pair of scissors. Might take you a little bit longer. And it's a little fussier to get down into those crevices, but it's certainly possible. And if you might have a better pair of scissors than I'm demonstrating with, you might have a smaller pair, but you can get pretty good shape cut out. So you can just cut it with your scissor as well. Now, if you don't have a, a thin um, cutting board like that, another option is to just take a pad of paper and use the back cardboard and stick that under. And then if you have your X-Acto knife, you can just carve using your cardboard as a cutting surface so that you don't cut through more than what you intend. You could even leave that. That's kind of a cool shape. So I've oriented my hand on that page this way. I could easily orient my hand 
vertically and then just leave this section attached here. And there you've got the hand. I'm gonna finish cutting another finger out so you can see one fun and easy way to get some color on here. Using a material you might have at home, which would be a set of chalks. So let me just show you this quick and easy way to, to get some color. This is just a regular set of pastels, hard pastels that are just in blocks like this. And of course, if you touch the pastel, you're gonna get the dust all over you. If you use pastel in a journal, when the pages close, it's gonna smear and smudge all over the place. So I never use pastels in the traditional way in my art journal. Instead, I'll take a piece of cotton or even paper towel, although I, don't, I probably wouldn't use my paper towel now uh, since it's in short, su short supply. But if you can find a piece of cotton or something soft, I can take the pastel, the cotton, and I can simply swipe it across the pastel a couple times until I get the pigment on my cotton. Now, if I press that pigment against the paper, and I didn't mean to pick up the blue, there we go. If I press the pigment against the paper, and I, I'm pressing hard, Okay, so it's not a gentle thing. I'm pressing pretty hard. Basically what I'm doing is I'm scrubbing the pastel into the paper. Look at that. I can get a really nice stencil effect. And the magic with this is that the pastel, once it's scrubbed in like this, will not smudge. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've really pressed down. I've scrubbed it in. Now, if I go like this, look at that. It's not smudging. It's not getting all over my finger, but I have a really nice stencil effect going on and I'm able to get some color in here. And the other amazing thing is that once you do put your pastel down, you could even go in and put a design like a ring or something. You could work on there with a pen and it doesn't clog the pen too much. And the last thing is that once your pastel is on, maybe you got it somewhere you didn't want it, you can take a pencil eraser and erase it. And normally with pastel, we would never really be able to erase it, but I can erase that. I can create all kinds of designs in that pastel using my eraser. So the only thing you need for this technique is an old set of pastels that are blocks and a piece of soft, something soft like cotton. And again, remember, you're not touching the pastel, you're leaving it flat, rubbing it and scrubbing it onto your paper. And that's going to give you that, um, that really great effect. Here's one that I did that I mentioned in the flip through where I have the hand oriented vertically. I'm gonna write the word stop in there. And now I have two areas in which to do journal, journal writing as I process uh, the events of just today. Now, if we wanna make it so that we get some bubbles on here, here's a really easy trick. And that is, I've taken this uh, pencil, the same pencil, and for that eraser, I took a, my X-Acto knife, and simply carved down to make that eraser end flat and to capture the whole, that whole circle. Now I'm just taking a water-based marker and I'm just gonna add the marker to the back of the pencil eraser like that. And now I can create some bubbles. And of course you can change the color of your marker whenever you want. Another way to create bubbles is to use some stamp ink. And I can use stamp ink with that same technique with the pencil. And again, this is just indicating, uh, you know, how many times I'm washing my hand with all the soap bubbles. I like to mix it up and have some variety. So these guys are pretty small. This is a pencil grip that my kids used when they were little so that they could learn to uh, hold the pencil correctly. I'm using it now in workshops for some 
other people who are having trouble with grips uh, for arthritis or whatever, I'm getting some rubber stamp ink on the back of that and able to put these bubble shapes wherever I want just randomly. And the other way to create the bubble is with a carving. So I took an eraser and I made the circle with my pencil. And now I'm going back to that X-Acto knife, if you have an X-Acto knife, and I'm carving away the edge of that. And can you see I carved a little bit out of this section right in here as well. And let me get that off. And now I can do a bubble out of the carving. So if I mix it up, it gives me that feeling of a lot more soap suds, which of course we need, right? 20 seconds of a lot of soap to get our hands clean. So that's one way to get that, that uh, bubble effect like I've done here on this page. And you can see the carved bubble, the stamp bubble from the back of the pencil, and then these circles are from that pencil grip. Okay, last couple things for this quick mini workshop that will blow your mind. So of course we are all using hand sanitizer and it is too precious to waste, but it's super fun to work with as an art material. And how many of you actually have bottles of red wine around, around the house? Well, uh, like I said, I know I'm sounding like somebody drinks a lot, but um, I poured some red wine into a spray bottle that I had emptied out and cleaned out. And of course I labeled it so I know it's in here. If I just spray on a page, it's going to dry like that, leaving this kind of uh, lavender-y color. And um, if it was in the sun, it would lose its color because it's not color it's not color fast. But in an art journal, it actually it grays out a little bit, but it'll it'll stay beautifully. This area was made by putting down a little bit of hand sanitizer. So I'm going to take a Q-tip and I'm going to just lift a little sanitizer off of the this little part there. So I've got some sanitizer on my Q-tip, and I'm going to just do a little a little swirl. And while I'm at it, I might as well clean my hands. So if I have a little hand sanitizer on my fingers, I can put a fingerprint down in a couple of places. And now watch what happens when I spray it with my, with my wine. Oh my gosh, who thinks of this? Isn't that crazy? It's got a natural resist. My hands are clean and the room smells like red wine. It's not a bad, not a bad situation. And again, if you just leave that alone to dry, that resist will dry and give you a really nice, nice effect. I used the wine right here. Remember I showed you this page a little bit ago and now you can see how I did it. This was hand sanitizer applied with a Q-tip. That was a little bit from my finger. I sprayed the wine and let it dry. After it dried, I took a white gel pen and just outlined the gel around the resisted area just to bring that up. So that's it for the workshop. As I said, I'm happy to send you a list of the, the words. If you want, contact me, jcmammon at gmail, and just request the list of words. I'm happy to put that in an attachment for you to cut up and glue down as you want for some found poetry. More tips and tricks on my website. And I thank you, and I really wish you good health.